Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band, and you don't legally have to go to school. I'll set the scene of my discovery. I was faffing around on the internet to distract from the emotional trauma of losing my fifth game of Overwatch in a row when I found myself looking at my human rights. I was scrolling through to see which one the UN might consider replacing with the right to have at least one teammate who doesn't run off alone and die until I looked at number 26, the right to an education, particularly the third part of it. Parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. And I was like, kind of education? What other kinds of education are there? So I googled it and found Finally everything clicked. How many kinds are there? Lots. There are lots of other kinds of education that are not the sit down, shut up, learn what we tell you school that we were stuck with, statistically. I couldn't believe I didn't think about it sooner. It was like that moment at age 8 when you paused mid boss fight and were like, actually yeah, if you travel to billions of houses all over the planet within one night, Santa's flesh would melt off his face from the air resistance. Does flesh melt? Or is it more of a burning? I was a weird child, but that realisation hit like a ton of bricks. Heavy bricks! And this is specified in several countries' laws, too. For me in England, Section 7 of the 96 Education Act says I should get efficient full-time education, either by regular attendance at school or otherwise. Under the or otherwise phrase in the law, you can legally go for alternatives and not get thrown in jail under compulsory attendance laws. And for my home slices across the pond in the USA, most states have their own law for what defines alternative education. For instance, this one in Maryland. Hey, oh, Dave, it's pronounced Maryland. Oh. Thanks, generic American Eagle. No problem, mate. Eh? It's like you have to go to school unless you're receiving regular thorough instruction during the school year in the studies usually taught to public schools to children of the same age. And that regular thorough instruction doesn't have to be conventional school. And here's one from the state of Minnesota, which I just made up, that looks really convincing because I made it from stringing together random words from this word cloud I found of the Declaration of Independence. People, states, pass absolute laws, right government colonies among independent powers. British justice. But hold on, what are those alternatives? Well, there are a few which fall into different spots on a continuum with varying degrees of freedom. Did someone yes, say- Yes, generic American Eagle, but I don't need your help. Of course you do, have some capitalism. <laughs> One? <laughs> That's not much capitalism at all. Firstly, there's probably the most popular one, homeschooling. My parents choose what to teach, sometimes around a pre-approved curriculum. And from what I saw, it doesn't often cause you to have social problems, or as a lot of people searching phrased it, make you weird. But even further along the continuum of freedom is unschooling. No curriculum, no assignments, and no testing. Instead, unschooling just lets you follow your own interests and learn as you do so. If you love gaming, you'll learn to read from playing role-playing games. If you love sports, you'll learn maths through looking at statistics of the teams you support. If you love metal, music then when I found out about this my brain was like yeah this sounds freaking awesome but I was like I don't know man would you actually be able to make a living doing that well since homeschoolers on average outperform their counterparts in the public schools by over 30 percentile points in all subjects Yes, a considerably better one. But the problem is, not every parent can homeschool. Some parents have full-time work, so they'd find it hard. And some parents are dead, so they'd find it really hard. So I was like, if those aren't scalable, is there a school version of unschooling? Then I found something that may be proper O underscore O. After asking on Facebook for some help with researching alternatives, someone messaged me saying they went to a Sudbury school. Now, it turns out there's quite a few of these Sudbury schools, and they are very, very different to what I remember. There's no testing, no homework, no set times for lessons, no syllabus, and the part which properly made my jaw drop, all the students and staff are part of a democracy where everyone has an equal vote in decisions. In other words, a five-year-old student has the same power in the school as a staff member. I was like, whoa, I gotta know more about this, so I asked this girl if we could Skype. The first thing I wanted to know was, what's it like? Like, coming from a conventional school, how is that transition? Usually, if you've been in public schools for a while, it takes you two years to figure out that your time is really your own, and that you can learn whatever you want. You spend a couple days, weeks doing nothing but reading books and watching TV until there's, there's this moment we call it bored is good. Whenever you're bored, that's when it really hits you what you want to do. It's all self-directed. That whole idea just fascinated me. So is literally nothing mandatory? There are things that are mandatory. You are required to sign in and sign out every day because there are state requirements that you have to be at school for a certain amount of time. And you're required to do a chore each day. And you can choose to opt out of a chore by paying a certain amount of money. Wait, what? Like real money? But a really nice thing in my mind is that there's a free market. So students can bring in popsicles and sell them to the other students, which is, I use popsicles as an example because that was a very successful business at Circle School <laughs> for a while. <laughs> the student would buy those bulk kind of popsicle stick things that you freeze and he would sell them for 25 cents and he earned a lot of money at seven years old <laughs> and so before he did that he had to put the motion into school meeting so he had to go that week and then he had to go the next week because all motions received two readings so that is also learning time management skills planning skills 
paperwork skills. <laughs> so in a Sudbury school, this seven-year-old gets experience in applying for permission to do business and being an entrepreneur. If the same seven-year-old tried that at my school, they'd have been given detention and learned that being an entrepreneur gets them punished. Now at this point, my brain was like, hang on, this sounds a bit utopian. I remember one of my bullies at school, he'd have been even more of a douche bagel if they'd had no system in place to control him. So I showed my brain this article about Ian Mercado High School, a school in the east end of London for boys who've been deemed unteachable. The most difficult boys in Britain. They got in fights. The teacher. Shut your mouth before I burn your face. These are kids who have serious behavioural problems, some of which are among the most troubled in the country, and all of which have been expelled from previous mainstream schools. And how do they control these kids? Well, they don't. We don't have rules. We don't physically restrain. We want the boys to learn self-control. Before they adopted the no punishment policy, all of the students from this school ended up in prison. Guess what percent ended up in prison afterwards? Zero percent. None of the students have gone into custody in seven years. In fact, 97% of the students have gone on to further education, employment or training. So how the hell do they do that? That's an insane percent of people to take out of prison and into the workforce. Well, instead of trying to force them to come to lessons and work like a normal school, they give them responsibility over their own actions. Giving the kids that responsibility and freedom helped literally some of the most difficult kids in the country open up and take steps to being financially independent. So there are alternatives schools that can benefit even the most aggressive people by being less controlling. But then I had the thought, I bet these Sudbury schools are expensive private schools. It probably costs their parents to send their kids there. And I was right, the annual fees for day pupils are around four to nine thousand pounds. But then I had the thought, well how much does the government spend on each pupil's education in normal schools? So I lost three more games and I looked it up. Around four to nine thousand pounds. The average across England is around four and a half thousand. And it's around that for other countries too. I found this study saying these countries on average spend just over nine thousand dollars per student. Now unless I've missed something, which is entirely possible, I'm not an expert, I'm just a rapper, jeez, I don't know. If these governments wanted to, they could choose to implement an alternative system and they wouldn't be paying any more than they currently are. So are there any schools like that which the government does fund without just having to organise a massive campaign to change the system? Come on man, that sounds like a lot of work. Kinda. There are charter schools. Schools that receive government funding but don't have the same system as conventional schools. I was having a really hard time trying to pin down what exactly they do differently until I found this video. When I heard some parents talking about charter schools, I was all ears. One woman says, I've heard charter schools are fantastic, but they're impossible to get into. And then another one says, no way, don't you read the paper? They're all fronts for stealing government money. And then this dad chimes in, oh come on, supposedly they have really high test scores, but they're insanely strict. Ugh. <laughs> I needed to find out for myself. Wait, hang on a sec. Ugh? Ugh. <laughs> I needed to find out for myself. Hey, voice actress lady, I, th I think you mean ugh. Ugh. <laughs> what are you, a caveman? Ugh. All the other hunters in the tribe were saying there were bison nearby, but ugh. ugh. I needed to find out for myself. What were we talking about? Oh, charter schools. <laughs> they can be everything from your child working at the computer at home to a big brick and mortar school where the kids wear uniforms and some where they even go to school on Saturdays. And everything in between. Everything in between? What does that even mean? That's like the least specific piece of crap. Oh, God damn it, this video wasn't going to tell me what they were. Ugh. <laughs> I needed to find out for myself. There are lots of other totally different types of charter schools with varying degrees of freedom. Like Ugh Lady mentioned, there was an online version of normal school, which turned out to be significantly worse than a regular school for students' maths and reading scores. There are specialist schools, like ones that focus mainly on teaching music or something. And there are Montessori schools. Damn it. I've heard of that. Where did I hear that? Oh yeah, Kanye. Kanye West. He once used this line. And I was thinking about starting up my own school, a Montessori. Which he then went on to rhyme with Montessori. Oh, yes. Christ, that is some next level slant rhyming. Eminem would be impressed. But let me clarify one thing. I'm the king of education reform rap, Kanye. Step off my niche, you little beast. <laughs> That's how you do slant rhyme. Apart from celebrity endorsements, Montessori schools have a few distinctive aspects to them. There's mixed aged classrooms. Instead of being told what lesson to do, students can choose what to do from a list of options. You're allowed to move around the classroom as much as you want. To me, it comes across as kind of a halfway point between the complete freedom of Sudbury schools and the strictly structured standard schools. Strictly structured standard schools. Strictly structured standard schools. Strictly structured standard schools. Yes. So some of these systems sound freaking awesome, but the skeptical part of my brain started to wonder if they actually had evidence saying how they were compared to normal schools. Because parents don't only send their kids to school because they think it's the law, unless they suck. So why do parents send their kids to school? That conversation might go something like, Daddy, why do I have to go to school? To get in a good university. Why? To get a good degree. Why? To get a good job. Christ, Billy, can't you just let me read the paper and go play Call of Duty like a normal seven-year-old? Not another word till I hear some headshots. Yeah. 
That's it. No son of mine will be a bloody failure. Good degree, good job. Parents want to ensure their kids are financially secure. So are people more financially secure in conventional schools or alternative schools? Well, that's difficult to measure for Sudbury schools, since all the ones I could find are private schools, which messes up the data a bit. People with parents who are rich enough and thoughtful enough to send them there will probably make more money anyway. However, I did find some really interesting stuff for charter schools. Ugh. Now, this study was done on hundreds of schools, so it looked pretty solid. And it said charter school attendance increased annual earnings by over 2,000. 12.7% higher than for comparable students who attended a traditional high school. But yeah, an over $2,000 increase. That's like how much in English money? A bank? But are these people becoming useful things like doctors and engineers or is this just where all the arty people come from? Like the former Sudbury school student who designed some of the coolest album covers ever called Storm Thorgerson? Wait, is that his real name? Holy crap it is. His parents took a look at their adorable baby boy and thought, "Oh, he looks like a Storm Thorgerson. Jesus Christ, are you serious? He gets Storm Thorgerson sounding like a Norse superhero and I'm stuck here with David Brown sounding like a tractor. Well, it turns out a higher percentage of graduates do go into arts, so hopefully we'll get more of this, but also a higher percentage go into computing, maths, education, social services, and healthcare. Why am I seeing it like this? So from the looks of things, conventional schools mean you'll make less money and society will have fewer doctors and scientists. So now the conversation might go, Daddy, why do I have to go to school? So you can learn things. But I don't need to know most of those things for most jobs. Bloody hell, it's not about the specific topics, it's about teaching you how to learn, boy. Did some sort just kill you? What do you call people who kill you, son? Do I have to? It seems pretty homophobic. <laughs> yes, you bloody well have to. Grab the headset. Oh, fantastic point, but do normal schools teach you to learn better than alternative schools? Well, do you remember that thing that teachers used to say that some people are visual learners, some people are auditory, and some are kinesthetic? So some people learn concepts better when shown through pictures, others do it better hearing it explained, and the rest have to make something to get it. Bunch of crap. Not true at all. 93% of teachers think it's true, multiple studies have proved it isn't. Also, lecturing, used in schools all over the place, is a lot less effective than active learning, like taking part in something which teaches you rather than just listening to it. In one study, it increased exam results by 6% just by changing that. Even the students who got 100% went up to 106%. That's unbelievable, <laughs> I'm lying. So at this point, I think it's reasonable to ask the question, if schools don't know how people learn, then how the hell can you trust them to teach you how to learn? So let's take a look at alternative schools. Remember when Bill Gates made stupid amounts of money? Some of that money was put into a study to find out how flexible learning environments compared to traditionally structured classrooms. They made gains in maths and reading over the last two years that are significantly greater than a comparison group from regular schools. Alternative schools often give kids responsibility over their own learning. Normal school teaches you that you will be told what to learn. That's not how adults learn things at work at all. In real life, you have to take initiative to find out how to do things better instead of waiting for the answer. Well, you don't have to, but you also don't have to wash your hands after using the toilet, but don't be gross, do it, ew. It's kind of like that quote. We ask 18 year olds to make huge decisions about their career and financial future when a month ago they had to ask to go to the bathroom. And some of them don't even wash their hands, ew. Adam Kotzko. So now the conversation might go, Daddy, why do I have to go to school? So you can learn things. But Adam Kotzko said- Kotzko? Sounds like a bloody Russian to me. Don't listen to him. Daddy, are you racist? Yes. Why, aren't you? No. Uh, I should have expected as much from a bloody Welsh half-breed. God, I hate your mother. Well, back to the point. Why do you- School teaches you to be an upstanding citizen, boy. Learn to be a decent member of society. This is another really important one. Learning stuff like democracy, laws, and how to take informed and responsible action to improve society. Well, as I said quite emphatically before, I was never taught what laws there are. I was never taught what laws there- All right, calm down, emo. A lot of people are not being taught these things. And for those lucky few who are, it's being taught to them in a conventional classroom with no practical application. Though to be fair, how could you teach the justice system in a practical way, set up a judicial system run by children. Yes. Our judicial system is run by students. The head of the judicial system is a student and it's a position that I held for a while. We do have fights, we do have bullying, and the consequence will totally depend on how the students come to the JC and how they handle the aftermath of the fight. That's incredible, but what about when things get serious? We do have suspensions and expulsions and the way that works at, at the schools that I have seen and attended, that goes to school meeting and everyone in the school has a chance to vote yay or nay to suspend or expel the student. Hang on, the kids decide who's expelled. So expulsions are not all that common, but we had a student who was uh, continuously coming to school on drugs. He was breaking rules while he was on drugs. I mean, all the expulsion meetings are gut wrenching and long. I mean, these are people that we have that we care a lot about. You know, he was a nice guy. He was friendly. He had friends 
at the school after about a, a four or five hour long meeting in which you had students ages eight or nine through 18 who sat there for that entire time. At the end of that meeting, we did vote to expel him um, and everyone was crying. You know, teachers, students. Crying. I can remember when a kid got expelled from my school and we were just like, lol, one less idiot druggy chav. Be a bit more respectful, mate. We're in difficult economic circumstances. It couldn't be more different in the Sudbury school. This kid had the whole school caring about him, and it hurt them to have to make the choice they did. Who's going to be more prepared to take part in society? The kid who's felt firsthand how their vote contributes to the future of other people, or the kid who can recite four keywords that will pass in the exam he'll forget about the answers to in a month's time. So at this point, we're at... Daddy, why do I have to yes, go okay, to... Yes, okay, I get it. Well, it teaches you social skills. What person ever became successful without knowing how to be considerate of his fellow man? Uh, Hitler? Apart from the Fuhrer. No one? No one. Precisely. Well, at current, loneliness levels are rising worldwide, which might indicate social skills are not being taught very effectively. But let's think about it. At current, school teaches you to be afraid of people higher in the hierarchy than you. They have more power than you, so you can't challenge them. In a Sudbury school, kids grow up equal to adults, so they're much more comfortable sharing ideas with them. I found a paper where someone analysed a Sudbury school specifically looking to see whether it affected social intelligence and found it was noticeably higher. A big part of the confidence comes from what Sudbury schools call their secret weapon. <laughs> Age mixing. Sorry, Kim, it's not a deadly secret weapon. Aww. Putin, no, really, it's not deadly, it's just a metaphor. It's pronounced Putin, super player. Sudbury schools believe there are huge advantages to allowing different ages to mix. And the paper also mentioned that these social skills, combined with the aforementioned responsibility to be part of a justice system, means students are mature enough to stop bullying of their own accord. Super important, considering when it comes to normal schooling, bullying is more common in schools than out of schools. Intentionally or not, the current school system is literally improving students' anti-social skills. And perhaps one of the most understated but important things we expect of school is we want students to be happy. So does normal school do this better than alternative school? Well, after googling school makes me want to, probably not. From the looks of things, you're less likely to hear a conversation like, Ah, Billy, how was school today? I'm a caring father now. Yeah, it was great, Dad. Yeah, I had so much fun. I learned all kinds of useful things. Well, that sounds bloody marvellous. Then you are to hear, Ah, Billy, how was school today? I told Google I want to die. Compared to that, this one questionnaire of Sudbury School students blew my mind. When a group of graduates were asked, are you glad you attended a Sudbury School rather than a more traditional school? 56 responded, yes, very. 11 said, yes, moderately. Two omitted the question and none responded, no. So there's a lot of reasons why the current system isn't good for getting jobs, being a citizen, being socially skilled, or even being happy. But even with that data, it's gotta be difficult for parents to make that kind of choice with so much social pressure to stick to the normal system. I couldn't help but wonder, how do those parents actually make that decision to send their kids to an alternative school. So I asked the girl from earlier and she put me in touch with her parents. I, I wasn't certain it was a great place to be. I wasn't sure how it was going to work for her. We ended up, what's it called, proctoring one of the college entrance exams and she agreed that she would take the exam every year. So she took the exam when she was an eighth grader and uh, did well enough that she could have gone to the local community college. So for me, that was part of that relaxing and knowing that it didn't really matter. After we'd been, she'd been at circle school for a year with absolutely no formal classes, she took that same test and did score three points higher. Out of like 20 points or something. So it was a significant difference with absolutely no formal classes. The other circle school staff were pretty clear with me that that was a coercive thing to be doing to my child. You know, that's not trusting her to manage her own education. And she didn't take the tests again until she was ready to start going to college, so. What about the other parents at the school? A fairly common one is adjusting to not getting report cards. So as a parent, what you know about what's happening at school is what your child shares with you. And that's pretty different. It's like uh, what I know about my neighbor is filtered through what they tell me about themselves. You know, I don't, I don't go to their boss and say, how's my neighbor doing it? <laughs> It's just part of being a respectful Person. member of society. Yeah. I've tried to keep this video fun so it's easier to get through, but when it comes to what to do about all this, I'm just not sure. It's incredibly difficult and frustrating. There are some people who will just be stuck because they can't afford it or because there aren't any alternative schools nearby, and that sucks. But for those other students, if their parents are willing to listen and treat them with respect, even when their school does not, they might be able to join a system where they're happier and better prepared for real life. It's ridiculous that there aren't more studies done on this. It was so hard to find the little data 
I could for this video. But my strongest feelings were explained really well by that girl's dad, who happened to be a teacher who ended up changing jobs to work at the Sudbury School. I was teaching physics, so I had kids that were 17 or 18 years old. But because it's a mass-produced system, they had to get my written permission to go to the bathroom. Where else in adult society does that happen? The only place I can think of is prison. There's a profound underlying disrespect inherent in that system. And it's not the fault of the teachers. It's not the fault of the administrators. It's not the fault of any particular person or group in the system. It's the system itself, the way the institution was set up is profoundly disrespectful to children. And they don't learn very well in that system. I felt that disrespect and I saw it in my, my students' behavior, at least the ones who were most awake and aware. More scary was the incredibly intelligent, well-adjusted students who didn't even notice that they were being disrespected. I just can't believe how many people are forced into a system that's possibly damaging their employability, health, and happiness. Look how many people commenting on this video had no idea there were alternatives legally available. So if you want to help, all I can suggest right now is to talk to people about it. If school won't teach them there are other choices, you can instead. Cheers for watching and have a nice day.